Black speech is a constructed language created by none other than, you guessed it, Mr. Tolkien. And the title of this video is completely true. Not only, according to the lore, this language was actually created by Sauron, but it may be one of his best inventions to date. Not that the guy invented a lot of things, he was more about destroying the world. Anyway, today I'm gonna introduce you to this conlang, its origins, pronunciation and purpose. For example, did you know that the scriptures on the One Ring are in black speech? Yeah, we'll cover that too. So please, sit back and enjoy our descent into darkness. First of all, as always, it's important to note that the original languages of Mr. Tolkien have been modified and further developed by the community for many decades at this point. That's why, although I have not heard it said many times, I have to acknowledge that many black speech phrases we have today probably belong to neo-black speech. If you'd like to explore the purest version of this language, I leave all the links and resources down below. I think we can all agree that Sauron was a bit of a meanie, right? But maybe we didn't get to know him well enough. What if he's really nice when he's not working? I mean, managing an army of thousands of very intelligent beings has to take a toll on you. Look, he even created a language for all his servants to use, so they can avoid confusion and communicate with each other, right? Well, that's how the Dark Tongue of Mordor was created, also known as Black Speech. You know, on second thought, the guy kinda sucked, there's no other way around it. But the language is cool. I mean, look at the inscription on the One Ring that I mentioned earlier. It's written in Tengwar, the writing system of not only Black Speech, but also Sindarin, for example. However, written in the English alphabet, this phrase looks like that. And you probably know its translation already, which has to be one of the most famous quotes from the Legendarium. One ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them. Okay, I'm dreading it, but I'll try to pronounce the black speech version of it. I'm not an expert, so please, bear with me here. Ashnask Dohbatuluk, Ashnask Gimbatul. Ashnask Trakatuluk, Akpuchzum Ishikhimpatul. While we're here, you can see how verbs in black speech are conjugated. It's kind of a riddle, you see. We have Duchbatuluk and Gimbatul just in the first line. They mean to rule them all and to find them, respectively. Black speech is what's called an agglutinating language, which means that you add different suffixes and prefixes to change the meaning of words, which also applies to conjugation. So you can see that Duchbat is the core of the verb to rule, and Gimbat means to find. Both of these words refer to them, and we can see the suffix ul repeating, so we can conclude that it modifies the verb to mean that an action is being done towards a group of people. And then we are left with uk, which has to correlate to all. You can apply the same logic to the other two verbs in the inscription. See? Pretty simple, right? It kinda reminds me of how many Asian languages work, as they utilize particles to change the meaning of words, at the same time making individual ones a lot longer. Black Speech made an appearance in The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings movies. And, fun fact, in The Hobbit movies, it was Benedict Cumberbatch who provided the voice for the shadowy representation of Sauron. And after a few recording sessions, Peter Jackson thought that maybe, just maybe, Black Speech would sound very natural if it was spoken backwards and then played in reverse. And so, they did that. Mad respect for Mr. Cumberbatch and his dialect coach for pulling it off. Wowzers. You know what? I may actually try doing the same at the end of this video. We'll see. However, what I wanted to get to is that the dialect coach I mentioned, and also a wonderful fella from the channel Languages of Middle Earth, who actually teaches black speech, they both say that the pronunciation of this conlang has to sound like disgustingly. You know, it is a language made for orcs and other kinda disgusting creatures, but most importantly, it was created by a broken man, a representation of evil who took the form of a literal abyss. It's not gonna be pretty, and it shouldn't. So that's why I think Mr. Tolkien intended for it to sound this way. 
Also, from this quote, we learn that black speech wasn't modeled on any language, but it also isn't a random string of noises. I mean, this is Mr. Tolkien we're talking about. Still, it's one of his least completed languages. You definitely can't become fluent in it, if we're considering its original form. Continuing that thought, let's explore the fictional origins of black speech, inside Middle-earth. So, imagine that you want to rule all the land you can see from a huge tower. You would probably want to unite it in darkness. Well, at least that's what Sauron wanted. But yeah, either way, he created black speech with the intention of everyone that he rules over using it. For now, it was made for orcs, the Nazgul, and trolls. But if he were to conquer every bit of Middle-earth as he wanted to, this group would later extend even to hobbits. However, as we know, this never happened. Not only that, but Sauron couldn't even make all his servants use black speech. Orcs never fully grasped this language, and so it contributed more to the evolution of various orcish tongues than to the unification of Middle-earth. And because of that, only a handful of beings actually spoke the pure version of the Dark Tongue, most notably the previously mentioned Nazgul. And to this day, its only tangwar based version we have is the inscription on the One Ring. It would be nice to have more, but maybe some things are best left to the imagination. Of course, Black Speech has a certain bond with Sauron, or any of the forms he takes. For example, supposedly anyone who possesses the One Ring can automatically understand this language, which happened to Sam in the Tower of Kirith Ungol. And also, speaking in the Dark Tongue of Mordor made you noticed by the Eye of Sauron, which is why the elves avoided speaking in it. Fortunately, they never had to stoop to that level. But also, they just didn't like how it sounded. As I already mentioned, Black Speech is natively written in Tengwar. But even Frodo couldn't read the One Ring inscription. I cannot read the fiery letters, he said to Gandalf. Why is that, you may ask? Well, the most probable explanation we have is that black speech is written in a different style of Tengwar. For example, each version of the inscription we know of has one thing in common. There are no spaces between words in individual lines, so breaks only occur in between them. Adding to that a slanted, kind of like a cursive style of the letters, and you can probably see that it really would be difficult to understand. Of course, as it is the only black speech sample written in this system, there's no way to further explore those findings. But while we're on that topic, here's a great infographic from mansbjorkman.net, which shows the Tengwar letters, which are actually present in black speech, and the sounds they represent. As you can see, Sauron was really picky. There are only four unique vowels used in black speech. A, O, I, and U, pronounced A, O, E, U. A bit more consonants to be sure, but yeah, it's definitely a meticulously crafted language. And those are the origins of black speech. But we can't stay in the 20th century forever. Let's explore neo-black speech, various reconstructions of this language, how the community changed it, and some non canon phrases. After all, that's all we've got. First up, it's called that there's no articles in black speech. So, no words like a, an, or the. At least, I really like that. I don't know if English would work without them, but goddamn, it would be a lot simpler and more condensed this way. And there's not much more we can learn about the grammar of black speech. There are some discussions on whether the adjectives are placed before the nouns or vice versa. Some linguists even propose using hyphens to denote the conjugation while separating verbs from suffixes through spaces. Also, just like English, black speech follows the subject, verb, object sentence pattern. Finally, we've come to some sample sentences of neo-black speech. These were created by Mr. Craig Daniel. He proposed some grammatical rules that allow us to make such sentences as The old wraith is bringing the ring. In black speech, it would be if we look into the short dictionary he provides, we can explore the meaning of individual words in it. We have Shah Ku, which means old man, so supposedly Shah correlates to old. And, of course, Nazg means ring. So, as a side note, that's why Nazgul means ring wraith. 
And then we're left with Srak to bring. While we're at it, here's some more vocabulary of black speech. You've probably heard about the orcs, Uhukai. And yeah, the word Uhuk means orc. We also have Sauron's massive trolls, the Olokhai. Similarly, Olok means troll. You can see that you can translate the suffix hai as folk or something like that. I also like the word Alba, elf, right? I think it's cool to know that one. And probably Sauron's favorite word, darkness, in black speech is Buchzum. And so the Buchzum Ishi from the inscription of the One Ring translates to in the darkness. It's so cool to me. Although we know so little about this dark tongue, it seems so real, fully fleshed out, like, like we know just a snippet of a fully constructed language. Oh man, it's so cool. Finally, I have some fun facts about black speech for you. From the site Arda Lambion, we learned that Sauron took inspiration from many places for how his language is supposed to sound, even from Elvish, namely from older, more primitive elven languages. And also, many sources say that the Russian historian Alexander Nemirovsky discovered a similarity to Haryan, a now extinct language used in the northern Mesopotamia around 2300 BC. I mean, look at how mysterious and ancient it seems. Well, it is. Like it's from a freaking Indiana Jones movie. If Mr. Tolkien actually took inspiration from it, that is incredible. And it isn't impossible, as Haryan has already been partially deciphered when Mr. Tolkien was creating the Lord of the Rings. Also, another funny story is that of a fan giving Mr. Tolkien a goblet with the One Ring inscription on it, written in black speech. And he never dared to drink out of it, as, I mean, words have meaning, and drinking out of something like that wouldn't even feel nice, if you know what I mean. You don't even have to believe in bad luck to understand his decision. Hmm, maybe that's why Mr. Tolkien never quite fancied black speech. So to end our journey, I decided to try what I said I would do earlier in this video, speaking black speech, but backwards. I'm gonna try pronouncing the first verse of the One Ring inscription. I don't think I can handle more. So are you down to learn it with me? So I'm no Benedict Cumberbatch, but okay, I'll try this. So here I found um, a website that reverses any text you've got. It's not the best possible approach to this problem, but it can get you surprisingly far. So here's the first line of the one ring inscription. And if I click reverse, we get this. And so now I'm gonna try using the rules of pronunciation of black speech and some unwritten rules of speaking in reverse, it would be like LUTABMIG. No, let me see, I'm making the G a bit too harsh. So once again, LUTABMIG, LUTABMIG, something like that. <sighs> I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how they did this. Okay, but maybe it's gonna sound cool, I don't know, let's see it. LUTABMIG, GZANG, SHA. I think that's pretty cool. Lutabmik Gzang Sha Kulutabrud Gzang Sha Well, sorry, I forgot that the R has to be pronounced like the French R, kind of like that. And also I have to do a much harsher pronunciation. Lutabmik Gzang Sha Kulutabrud Gzang Sha I don't know how it's gonna turn out, <laughs> really. But okay, one last try, please. Mr. Cumberbatch, the spirit of Mr. Cumberbatch, come to me. His energy from 2010 or whenever they recorded it. Man, like imagine doing 30 lines in it. Wow. Lutabmik Gzang Sha. Kulutabhut Gzang Sha. Okay, now I'm gonna play it in reverse for you. I don't know how it's gonna turn out, so I hope it's cool. And I thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new and uh, see you soon. Ash Naz Uchbahlulu Ash Naz Imbatul Ash Naz 
Luch Vatul Luch Aș Naz Im Vatul Aș Naz Luch Vatul Luch Aș Naz Im Vatul Kind of doesn't really work, does it? 